Hi there, this is Cody Jackson with Codemom, and this time we're going to change things up and we're going to talk about general information technology principles rather than programming. Uh, in this case, today we're going to take a look at motherboards, uh, mostly because I just kind of felt that a lot of people may not actually know what's going on in their computer, they just know how to interact with it. So the next few videos in this series we're just going to talk about the hardware that's in your box and how it all works together to allow you to program on it interact with it and use it for what you want to do so what is a motherboard so a motherboard is the main board for all of your computer connections the interfaces components basically if you open up a computer whether it's a laptop a server or a desktop it's going to be the biggest board in there that has all of these little components on it. Some of them may be cards, some may be soldered on there as chips or uh, other devices. It's what holds everything that allows everything to talk, hence the name motherboard. There's a variety of form factors. Most of them are based off of the ATX specifications and then from there it's basically just shrinking the size of the motherboard while keeping the same general configuration. Obviously large boards are going to provide you with more features but they also require bigger cases. Smaller boards are more limited in those features uh, and the power that they can produce in terms of the amount of peripherals that you can add to it and um, integrated features but you can put them almost anywhere uh, and they can even go down to palm sized computers such as the Raspberry Pi motherboards are comprised of multiple layers of pcbs which just stands for printed circuit boards if you ever happen to look at a motherboard or uh, any sort of pcb type device um, you should be able to see layers of metal uh, interspersed with uh, layers of insulation material it is rare that the interla interlayer connections will break uh, resulting in weird problems. Any sort of PCB is going to have a quantity of valuable metal in it and if you dispose of them properly you can recover um, gold, lead, tin, uh, a variety of metals from these. There's about 30 grams of gold per motherboard and about 2 grams of gold per chip. So when you dispose of your computers make sure that you take them to an e-waste site so that all that valuable metal can be collected and recycled. So now we're going to jump into the motherboard components um, and talk about how the motherboard is laid out. So this is an example of micro, micro ATX motherboard. Um, we'll talk about the different sections in a second but I just wanted to show this to you in case you've never had the opportunity to actually take a look at a motherboard so this is the same picture um, and I've just highlighted the different locations on the motherboard that we're going to be talking about very briefly this area up here in the yellow is your RAM slots this orange area is the CPU this blue area plus this blue area is your power connections this little cyan area is your SATA connections this purple area down here is your Southbridge chip these magenta uh, are your M2 um, solid state drives connections this orangish area here is the uh, PCI expansion slots and then this green area down here is the front side connectors that connect to your computer case. So CPU and heatsink attachments. So as you can see this is where the CPU fits in and then these areas up here are where the heatsink that connects to the CPU latch onto and that helps uh, disperse the weight of the CPU and the clamp so that you're not crushing the chip that uh, pressure is transferred to the motherboard itself. Um, maybe hard to see but this is a little lever right here this silver bar is a little lever you if you pull that lever up it slides the assembly to the side allowing you to insert the CPU chip pins into the slot and then you flip the lever back down and it uh, basically binds the 
pins into that socket. This is called zero in insertion force. Prior to that, when they didn't have as many pins, you would just have to push it down uh, manually into a socket where the connectors were basically springs. Uh, as you started adding more and more pins, the friction from all of those pins made it nearly impossible to put it in correctly without bending of the pins, and so they created the zero insertion force socket for that purpose. The M2 solid state drive connectors. That would be this little portion up here and this little portion right here. So in case you're not familiar, the M2 connections uh, basically look like a stick of gum. They are solid state, so it uses flash memory uh, to act as a hard drive. And so this is why it's so much faster than a regular hard drive because you have uh, chips that are controlling the storage of data rather than a traditional spinning platter. And so with these M2 connections, you are able to have terabytes of data in you know, something that's about as big as your finger. Uh, PCI expansion slots and CMOS battery. So this white um, and these black colored slots are your expansion slots. They can be used for video cards, networking cards, uh, additional USB ports, pretty much anything that's considered a uh, add-on peripheral. You're probably going to find a uh, additional card to interface with the motherboard. This little circular device over here is the CMOS battery. That is the battery that maintains the clock, uh, the calendar, as well as your settings for uh, all of your motherboard configurations in the BIOS and so that you do not lose that data in between powering up your computer and turning it off. All right, so this is kind of spread out. So over here and over here are your power supply parts. Over here on the right side is the actual connectors to the uh, power supply box that is actually connected to the wall. So you have your cables coming from that power supply into this connection here, and then from there it's passed out through the rest of the board. Here is a power supply regulator. So basically what that does is it takes a lot of the power coming from that power supply and regulates it so that it is providing clean power to the motherboard, primarily the CPU and some of the peripheral devices so that you can operate the system without having to deal with uh, voltage spikes or dropouts or anything like that that could um, shut down your computer or damage it. Your RAM slots. So these are actually vertical in the picture, but I rotated them uh, to make it a little bit easier to see. You can see that we have four slots here that creates a bank of RAM. So RAM is random access memory. This is the operating area for all of your instructions and code that is being run on the computer. Your hard drive stores files long term. RAM is while in operation. Once you shut off the computer, anything that was in the RAM is gone. Depending on how your computer is configured, you may have to insert two by two of your uh, memory sticks, or you can insert one by one. Um, it just kind of depends on how the how the computer is configured. So SATA is basically a serial connection for uh, external hard drives. It used to be parallel connections, but there were some limitations to that and they eventually converted over to serial um, and we'll talk about that in a future video um, but anyways you have two ports right here that are for internal drives so those would go into the tower or whatever chassis you have for your computer and then this is an external port if you want to add external hard drives to your computer that are not USB. Southbridge chip you can't see it because it's under the heat sink, but there is a Southbridge chip on here. Now, very briefly, the Southbridge chip controls 
um, your peripheral devices. So the PCI cards, talking to the hard drives, stuff like that. So that is the interface between the CPU and all of those external devices. There's also a Northbridge chip, which is used for uh, communicating with memory, but nowadays that is integrated into the CPUs for maximum performance and maximum optimization. So eventually you may see Southbridge chips integrated uh, into CPUs, but currently they are still a separate uh, chip. So this is a lot of the additional ports that are uh, available to motherboards. Um, you have your audio uh, connections for speakers and things like that, uh, system fan. Uh, you have an RGB here and another RGB connection over here. Those are uh, red, green, blue controllers for LED lights. So if you wanted to add lights to your computer case, this is where you would connect those. You have a serial port connection here. So this is an old legacy serial port. Um, you also have a parallel port here. This is for traditionally printers and very old parallel devices such as CD-ROMs. There is a TPM module connector here. TPM is basically just a cryptologic chip that provides a trusted platform module um, for your computer. And so it makes it more secure because you have an external chip. It's not reliant on anything on the motherboard. Uh, there's two sections for USB 2.0, and then there's also a connector for USB 3. Uh, and finally, there are two connections for your front panel connector, so that's going to be your power button, your LED display lights, and things like that. Uh, we talked about the trusted platform. So this is the chip that would be inserted into that uh, socket that we just saw. And it's basically just a dedicated cryptographic chip that handles encryption, decryption, um, digital signing, and stuff like that. And finally, on the back side of your computer is going to be your primary I.O. ports. So you have a button on this one that allows you to flash the BIOS. So basically, if you have an update in your firmware, you would use it. Um, you insert a USB thumb drive here, you push the button, and it will go ahead and update the firmware on your motherboard. Uh, very briefly, hardware is stuff you can touch. Software is obviously code that you create. And then firmware is software that's on hardware. So basically, uh, a lot of your chips. Uh, there are two USB 2.0 ports right here. Uh, there is a legacy PS2 port, so that is primarily used for keyboards or very old mice. There are two video ports that come out. There is a display port and an HDMI port, um, depending on what you have on your monitor. There are actually a total of five USB 3 ports on here. So there's two here, two here, two here. But this one happens to be a USB-C type connection rather than your traditional type A. Um, this is what you would commonly see on cell phones and things like that. Your Ethernet port is up here. So this is for uh, hardwiring into a network. And this panel over here is all of your analog audio out. So this is going to be... Um, your headphones, your microphone, things like that. And then this is a Sony Panasonic uh, digital uh, audio out connection. So that if you have a stereo system or something like that that uses fiber optic light, uh, this would be the connection that you use to hook up to that. So we're going to take a look at laptop motherboards and just see how they compare to desktop motherboards. So this is an Apple MacBook Pro motherboard. And you can see it's a lot more dense in how the soldered on components are placed onto the motherboard. Down here we have our memory CPUs, this green area here. This is our Southbridge chip um, and it's connected to a heat pipe here. Here's all of our peripheral ports. This black 
item here that is connected to the heatsink is called a heat pipe. It's similar to liquid cooling except instead of having water we just have a phase change material in there that changes from a liquid to a gas as it takes heat from the CPU comes over to this radiator where it radiates that heat out of the system and then converts back to a liquid and comes back to the CPU to start that cycle again. Because the south bridge doesn't get as hot, it can just use a simple heat sink um, that connects to the chip itself and then comes over to this larger heat sink here. This is the back side of the laptop board and there's not a whole lot here uh, other than you can see that there's a lot of small components that are soldered directly onto the board using surface mount uh, connections. So same functionality as a regular desktop motherboard, just a lot more dense. We talked about uh, the Southbridge and the Northbridge chipsets. So uh, the chipset basically defines the capabilities of the computer. While the CPU controls everything, it's the Northbridge and the Southbridge that actually provide access for the CPU to connect to peripheral devices, to connect to uh, memory and things like that. While you can make upgrades to your computer, those are only so far you can go before you have to change out the motherboard because that chipset is no longer uh, capable of new features. So if you want to uh, upgrade your CPU, you may have a socket that is compatible with, say, two generations. Maybe you have a socket that could do, say, maybe an i5 Intel CPU and it can also support an i7 and maybe even an i9 but if the chipset doesn't support that i9 you can't put the i9 into that socket it may fit but your computer's not going to run correctly it may not even run at all it may just do a hard fault so you need to be aware of that uh, in terms of obsolescence. That's why computers usually have a lifespan of about three to five years in terms of being able to be upgraded. Of course you can still use a computer from the 1980s if you want to uh, deal with the speed and functionality of it. Chipset defines what your computer is capable of doing and once you reach that point of you can't upgrade anymore that's when you have to swap out the motherboard. So we've talked verbally about what the South Bridge and the North Bridge does. Here's graphically what they do. So you have your CPU that's connected on a bus to the North Bridge. You may sometimes hear the term front side bus or FSB and that is the connection between the CPU and the North Bridge and to the memory. So all of this together runs at the front side bus speed. And it used to be that the front side bus was a multiple of the CPU speed slower because the memory was slower. Because the CPUs have pretty much leveled off in terms of their speed, the memory speed can be very close to the CPU speed now. And so you get maximum performance and the North Bridge is what handles that direct memory access between the CPU and the memory. The South Bridge is going to be uh, slower than your CPU speed simply because it doesn't have to be as fast. It's talking to input output devices which may have some sort of delay time or latency involved such as accessing a network, talking to a hard drive, stuff like that. And so it doesn't have to run as quickly as the Northbridge does. So that's it for this video. Uh, we talked about what a motherboard is, why it's important, the primary components that are on motherboards. Uh, we looked at some of the internal and external ports that you'll find on motherboards. And we talked briefly about the chipsets that are used by motherboards, the Northbridge and the Southbridge, and how those basically define the true capabilities of your computer. Next time we're going to talk about the actual CPUs, kind of do a very high level dive into how they work, how they function, why they are so important. Um, until that time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want more specific details, please let me know in the, in the comments. Um, otherwise, until next time, have fun and keep learning. Thanks.